So today I have a new album review and probably uh, the biggest band I've ever reviewed on this channel and uh, probably ever will review. I can't think of another bigger band of releasing an album uh, during these times. I'm talking about the Rolling Stones. The album is Hackney Diamonds. Uh, this is uh, their 24th British album and 26th American album released on October 20th, 2023 through Polydor. This one has some really big names. It has Elton John, Lady Gaga, Paul McCartney, Stevie Wonder, and Bill Wyman. This is the band's first studio album of new material since A Bigger Bang in 2005, and their first uh, after the death of Charlie Watts in 2021, who actually uh, plays uh, on this album. So the last studio album was Blue and Lonesome from 2016, um, and then they were uh, thinking of writing some new material. COVID hit, so that got stalled. Uh, Paul McCartney suggested... Uh, they work with Andrew Watt and uh, Mick Jagger agreed. They started writing songs in uh, 2021 and then 2022. And um, they got Bill Wyman to come by. And uh, it's also uh, the last uh, studio uh, album with Charlie Watts and uh, the first with the session drummer Steve Jordan. So if you don't know, a Hackney Diamonds is a, a London slang name for shattered glass left behind after burglars have smashed a window to break in. And Hackney is an inner city area of London uh, that's associated with a high crime rate. So many of you, you might have known that, but you might not have. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. We all know who the Rolling Stones are. And so let's even just go into the track by track. The first single was Angry. Uh, this is a very catchy song. I like the guitar tone and this, the band sounds very fresh. They sound full of vigor. A really great way to start off the album, and it, it's just very representative of the core sound. Uh, after that is I uh, Get Close. Uh, this song continues with the guitar-driven rock. Let me mention, I really like the guitar tone on this song. This song is more reminiscent of the late 70s to early 80s sound, maybe similar to an album like Tattoo You. There's some saxophone in the song. It sounds very good, and I thought it was... A really good addition to that song. I think the saxophone really works. Depending on You is uh, the third song. It's one of their country songs. It reminded me a little a bit of like Wild Horses. It's an acoustic song with some piano and accompaniment. The song is also very well placed on the album. I read a few comments saying this could have been on Sticky Fingers. And that sounds about right. They're capturing that country sound that that band has always enjoyed. Bite My Head Off is one of the harder rockers. Uh, they turn up the distortion on the guitars and the pace is faster. Uh, this is one of the more energetic songs. This is also one of their collaborations with Paul McCartney on bass. And Paul does a solo. It sounds really good. They, he turns up the, the distortion on this one. These guys sound like very young. And this song could have been on one of those like late 60s, like proto-punk types of songs. This one is very good. I like it a lot, being that I'm like a fan of hard rock and metal. The next song is Whole Wild World. Pretty cool song. It's very energetic. It has some of that like 80s post-punk sound in the guitars. It's very like melodic and radio-friendly uh, sound. I think uh, this would be a good uh, one to release as a single. It's just it's super catchy. It's very radio-friendly. And just the guitar solo is very great. So that's like one of the standout tracks. The next song, Dreamy Skies. Another one of their blues and country songs. This one has uh, Ronnie Wood playing some slide guitars. Just very laid back. Uh, Mick Jagger sings, um, I've got to get away from it all. That's in the lyrics. And the song about wanting to get away from the hectic day-to-day -day life and get somewhere and just relax. Uh, there's a cool harmonica solo towards the end of the song, and it's just another good one. Mess It Up is a rocker, and this one has a classic sound. Uh, maybe something from... Uh, you know, their earlier period, and Mick sings in like a higher range in the song, and has a very upbeat rhythm. I read a few comments that this was one of the more like popular songs. I still thought it was very good. I'm noticing a lot of these songs are very catchy, and they have good replay value. Let me also mention that this song has a Charlie Watts on drums, so you may notice that as well. Live by the Sword is another classic song. It has Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts. This one's just a classic just a great sound, has some piano in the background, some nice grooves. The guitar solo is awesome. It's classic The Rolling Stones. I read a few comments of people comparing it to Emotional Rescue or Some Girls, and I think they were able to capture that sound, that like 80s sound. Driving Me Too Hard is another one of their country rockers. This has that classic sound. 
Uh, some people compare this one to Tumbling Dice, but either way, it sounds very good. The guitar solo was very bright and it stood out in the song. The overall guitar so tone uh, sounds very good on this album, and this album in general has a really good production value. Tell Me Straight is a Keith Richards song. It's slower, it's blues-based, um, the song is very emotional. The overall vibe of the song is very laid back, and it's more like simple, it's minimalistic, but it's really effective. It just gets the message across. They don't go overboard with all these extra sounds and instruments. It's, it's kind of simple, but it's a really good song. Then there is uh, Sweet Sounds of Heaven. That was the second single. This one has Lady Gaga. This is more of a gospel-sounding song. I thought it was good. I actually wish Lady Gaga had more presence on the song. Uh, I really like her vocals. I mean, she can pretty much fit in with like any band, like anywhere from Metallica to the Rolling Stones. Her contribution on anything is great. Um, it's a long song, over seven minutes. Um, it's probably a fan favorite. For me, um, I don't really like this style of music that much, so I found the other songs better. I'm not saying it's a, a bad song. It's probably like not for me, but it's a good track. And uh, one of the final, actually, it is the final song because the next one is a cover song. And there's also a cool uh, backstory with that. The last song is a Muddy Waters cover uh, called uh, Rolling Stone Blues. This is the song that gave the band their name. But what's interesting is that this is the first time they have ever uh, covered this song. Uh, it kind of leads us to believe that it's their swan song. They're saying goodbye to their fans. It's just a theory. I'm not sure if this is going to be their last album, but... It is uh, possible, you know, these guys are, um, I think, like 80 plus years old, so this might be the last one. Now for my final thoughts, I think it's very good. I haven't really listened to this band, or I haven't really li listened to any of their recent albums in many years. I still, like, enjoy the classics, but otherwise uh, I haven't really heard anything new from this band in a really long time. Uh, but it's better than I expected. It has good replay value. The production is great. You hear all the instruments very well. And it's fitting. It, it includes uh, Charlie Watts, includes uh, many other members. So my score is an 8.5 out of 10. Let me know in the comments what you thought. I've done a few uh, classic album reviews of the Rolling Stones. So I will stick one of them right here. Please uh, like this video. It helps me with the algorithm. Please subscribe. I need about... 50 uh, subscribers to reach my goal of 2,000. I want to do that before the end of the year. And uh, please leave a comment. I'd like to respond, and I'll see you in the next one.